This is Jim Hendershot. Uh, we're going to present to you lecture number 11, which uh, is a lecture that covers uh, the stator, the stator, uh, stators on these three machine types, uh, uh, some ideas and some criteria and some practices and uh, requirements of that you need to think ahead on uh, before you begin your design of the stator. Uh, the state of requirements that we said several before, uh, several times before, are very similar to one another for these are three machine types: the induction motor, synchronous reluctance, and the uh, permanent magnet synchronous machine. Uh, the the cores uh, must be made from low core loss soft magnetic materials, either laminated or sintered. Uh, we have to avoid saturation in the designs in the teeth and the yoke cross sections. That means uh, stay as close to the knee of the uh, magnetization curve as possible. Uh, this means around between 1 and 1.4 Tesla. Uh, try to avoid going up as high as 1.8. Now thin tooth tips on the stator teeth. The all these stators are open slot stators and one of the problems with trying to use the same uh, induction stator lamb with a PM machine is that those tooth tips saturate very quickly which increases the cogging torque so uh, if there's any opportunity to change the die the angles on the tooth tip should be increased so that the length of the tooth thick extension past the side of the tooth should be the same distance as the throat of the tooth where tip where it attaches the tooth to avoid saturation of tooth tips which is like having a big slot opening and uh, when when stacking the laminations into a core avoid any uh, interlamination shorts and uh, we'll discuss that uh, further later in another uh, in another lecture but uh, uh, the laminations need to be insulated from each other through their entire surface, especially around the air gaps and at the OD. Otherwise, you get uh, eddy currents there that cause very hot spots in the in the core, can short out windings. All kinds of horror stories have uh, emerged. The the cores should all be stacked uh, from the individual lamination using uh, precise tooling, and so that the cores are accurate. Uh, at some point we'll show you a picture, a photograph of a poorly stacked rotor core for an induction motor where the, 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 uh, the teeth are offset from each other from one lamination next to the other to such an extent that the cross-sectional area of the die-cast aluminum conductors is reduced a lot. Uh, this must be avoided. And your tooling should should uh, locate the lambs off of whatever's the most critical diameter. Maybe it's the teeth themselves, maybe it's the OD, maybe it's the ID. The, uh, in the case of a brushless motor, it's probably the, the sides of the teeth or the OD. In the case of an induction motor, it's probably most important to locate the lambs off the ID because the air gap's so small. Uh, the cores in my opinion, after after uh, the core is completed, it must be stored to keep it from rusting. Uh, stored or wrapped in the uh, outgassing anti-rust papers, or uh, then then after the the core has uh, has been completed and insulated and wound and and put in a motor, I think there should be uh, should be encapsulated, painted or or dipped in varnish to. to uh, uh, keep it from rusting. Uh, these guidelines apply to uh, axial flux stators as well, with a few modifications, but not many. Now, uh, t we always want to design a stator to uh, produce a, a motor with maximum efficiency. So, so uh, we want to minimize the. F we want the frequencies to be low, the flux densities to be low. And uh, it's, it's desirable to punch the lamination from thin gauges of electrical steel with the insulation core plates on at least one side. Uh, you can compare uh, so that so that you can do the trade-off between uh, the cost and the core losses. You can compare 
semi-processed materials with core plate on them versus uh, uh, laminations that have been annealed after the punch because the post annealing costs money, but uh, it certainly reduces the core losses. You could consider cindered electrical steel core components. That is really catching on in a lot of uh, low cost applications. And as long as your flux density requirements aren't too high, uh, you can get very low core losses and, and, and have stator cores and rotor cores in very complicated shapes. These cindered parts don't have high. Uh, uh, tensile strength capabilities, so they have limited use in rotors, but they're very popular in uh, high volume, low cost stators. Um, there's another low core loss material called Met Glass, that's a trade name, that's an amorphous uh, uh, magnetic steel. It has a limitation on flux density of 1.54 Tesla, but very, very low core losses. So, uh, some cases that's hard to fabricate stators out of it, but that's something to consider. I think we've mentioned that before. Minimize ohmic losses in the stator phase circuits. Use the largest wire, wire diameter possible with a maximum slot fill possible. And minimize the uh, phase coil and turn lengths. Keep the coil short. This is, uh, the, these are the, 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 two, the two main issues that are, the three main issues that are, are used to convert standard grid induction motors to high efficiency, that is to use better lamination materials with insulated coatings, number one. Number two, higher slot fills, and number three, minimize intern height. Those are the three strategies used to, uh, to go to premium efficiency motors. And uh, to optimize these strategies, it requires a careful balance between the, the copper space and the iron space. Uh, for if you're stuck with an existing lamination, the only thing you can modify, you can do two things. You can stuff it full of more copper by hand. You can uh, uh, shorten your end turns a bit, and you can uh, uh, increase the length of the machine a bit. To that reduces both the flux density and the uh, and the current density. As with respect to uh, manufacturing the stator cores themselves, as we said, the uh, laminations must be stacked using uh, proper alignment fixtures, no matter whether by hand or automation. And they should always be stacked with the stamping burrs facing the same direction. Don't reverse the burrs. So, so they all need to be nested together with the burrs going the same direction. Uh, stamping dies, they wear as they, as, they, as they punch. Carbide dies don't wear as fast as uh, tool seal dies, but they still wear and uh, the edges of the punch and the die get rounded off and you get uh, burrs that get wiped down the, the die clearance between the, the punch and the die. You get burrs on the lamp. So when those burrs get too big and get nested together and they're too large, they nest together very nicely because when a lamination is stamped, it's sheared part way through its thickness, and then it's it, it's not sheared the rest of the way. It's 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 a tear. It's torn, you might say, rather than sheared. So, so the sheared edge is not straight. It's uh, it's uh, right angles to the side of the laminations where, where it's sheared, but then it breaks away or tapers a bit where it tore, and that. Uh, that material that was torn becomes the burr. So the more uh, slot clearance you have between the punch and the die, why the bigger the burr, and those burrs when nested together cause uh, eddy current losses, shorting there. So at some point when the burrs get too big, the dies have to be taken out and sharpened to reduce the burrs again. So that must that's a, a manufacturing point that must be paid attention to and on your plant floor and the designer should have some say so and some some uh, in the in the process not just to save money and wait longer till it's uh, till uh, you sharpen the die but to have have a practice of sharpening it based on how big the burrs are uh, and if there's any misalignment of the lambs with respect to the slots radial I mean 
then that reduces your winding slot area. Um, the, uh, there shouldn't be uh, any eccentricities between the ID and the OD from one lamp to the other. This is a problem too. If, uh, if the alignment arbor is made too much smaller than the ID of the lamb, then, uh, then the lambs are, are randomly located on that diameter so there's uh, so you wind up with a rotor or a stator that's much smaller in diameter than the punch lamination diameter and that that should be avoided you uh, expanding arbor should be used to locate uh, lambs for stacking it's very important i've seen lots of lousy stacked cores and when the cores are made it's uh, important to compress them under uh, under a uh, a high force at 90 degrees to the to the sides of the stack for squareness and flatness compression of the of the core but before that core is uh, cleated or welded then that pressure should be dropped so there's no compression stresses in the in the uh, in the core you need to compress it with a high force to get a good square stack and and uh, take care of any burr problems and then uh, release that pressure if before the core is welded, TIG welded or laser welded on the OD. Uh, never use filler metal when you weld a, a stator core. Either use TIG, plasma, or laser. And use several small welds, very narrow and not very deep, and put them over their center of a tooth. It's best to weld 180 degrees apart or all at the same time. If you have multiple torches and, and it's automated or semi-automated, make all the welds at the same time. Do not over-weld cores. Don't add, never add filler metal. And uh, you don't need any depression stamped in the laminations. A lot of people think you need a, a depressed place in the OD of the lamination to allow for the weld. That is not necessary. If you take laser or plasma, you'll never get any buildup of weld material. I know some people don't believe that, but it's absolutely true. It's, it's not even arguable. Uh, you'll get some weld depressions uh, from the, the shrinking of the weld, but you don't need to put a depression in there before you weld. You, you will not get any extruded weld materials as long as you start the arc off of the core. Start the arc, the laser or the TIG arc, off of the core on copper pieces on each end of the the core now but but before you even have a core you got to punch the lamination so uh, uh, these are either done by laser cut by wire EDM by notch or by blank notch re blank dies or by single uh, punch dies uh, use uh, known as fine blanking or through progressive dies a progressive die is a big die that has several stations in it and, and the first station might take the shaft hole out. The second station might take the, the rotor bar slots out. The third station might take the stator bar slots out. And the fourth station might punch the rotor out of the, out of the, out of the stator. The next station might shear the ID, what materials left in the ID to uh, uh, maintain the ID of the stator. And the last station will break the OD of the stator away from the strip of steel that it was stamped out of. Uh, it's always advisable to punch the rotor out of the hole of the stator, otherwise you waste it. That's a big cost savings. Um, the how, how do you fasten laminations together to build a core? Rivet, cleat, bond, clamp, uh, interlocking, I didn't put welding up there, but welding has got to be there because that's a very common way. I guess I didn't put it there because I said it before. In die interlocking of lambs uh, that comes right out of the die. That is a very popular way for high volume motors. Uh, this is an example of uh, of a company that makes uh, core stacking equipment. This is uh, conventional cores are made this way through this process for rotors and stays. You can follow it. I'm not going to go over it. But this system that this uh, Mitsui high tech, uh, that's that's where they uh, nest the 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 lambs together and they get cores right off the die. I'll show you a picture of one later. Uh, 
This is what a typical blown up view of a lamination set would look like. This has 36 uh, semi-open stator slots with round slot bottoms and 40 semi-open rotor slots with round slot problem. This is probably a four or six pole 10 kilowatt lamination set. And uh, it's, it's very typical of, uh, it's, it's very typical of a, a lamination set used for an induction motor. And this, uh, this stator lamp could be used for brushless as well. It could be used for uh, uh, reluctant synchronous also. Here's uh, uh, some nice pictures of, of the interlocking of the lambs that I showed you two slides ago uh, from this uh, Mitsui High Tech. This, this Mac system uh, gives you laminations like this where right in the die when you're punching the slots and notches, you punch these little uh, dimples that nest each other from one die to the other and make a beautiful stack that comes right off the die. So there's no labor for that. And it's very accurately aligned. Everything is aligned perfect because it was all tooled in the die. This is an example of, of proper welding of the lamb. That's, uh, that's been TIG or laser welded in those two places. And, and it's, uh, it's important that you do it over holes like that. So shrinkage takes place. There might be some stresses from the weld in this area, but it's not going to make the bore out around or or put any stresses in the m m most of the magnetic circuit. The flux density when motor's running is very low or almost zero out in there anyway. Now this is a case where very large cores for uh, wind turbines and uh, power plant generators and great big machines, you see these lambs have been stacked, the stator lambs have been stacked into groups with spaces between them and these, these are special uh, spot welded uh, lamination uh, spacers that provide cooling vents up through the core and to hold all this together they put uh, they put these uh, these steel soft straps across the OD and then they'll have uh, finger plates on the end another big thick thing on the end and all this is hand welded together and uh, this mounts inside of the frame of the, wherever this machine goes this is a different way of welding lambs together, and it's done this way to provide these, uh, these cooling vents, which is very important. We've talked about that before, and we'll talk about it again. And here's an example of a core. This happens to be a motor I designed and built. This is a, uh, a, a quite a large, large machine. I don't remember what the, I think the OD is something like, it's over 200 millimeters. I think it's 200 millimeters, and the ID is 150. 350 millimeters and uh, it has a lot of slots and and the lambs are quite thin because this is a high-speed induction machine and it's used for traction for vehicles 12,000 rpm and uh, four pole so these lambs were all bonded together and it's a very nice uniform core excellent tooling was used and and just to show you what it looks like then when during the coil insertion process you can see the slot liners, the cuff slot liners, Nomax slot liners were put in and insulated. And then the coils inserted and then top sticks put over top of the coils. And we'll talk about those in the lecture on insulating the stator. But when, when, you, when you machine wind the coils and hand insert them like this was done, you can, uh, it's easy to get 35 to 40 percent. To get over 40 percent, to get up to 45, you really have to fight the coils to get them in. And, a lot of shops don't want to do it, but if, if the guy works for you, he works direct for you, he can do it. He can get up to 45% slot fill. And what that means is bare copper slot area to slot cross-sectional area. If you're going to automatic machine insertion, wind the coils and insertion with all this fancy tooling and induction motors, you can't, you can't do that high slot fill. 25, 35% is about the max you can get. If you use rectangular wire like Ramey does for the Chevy Volt, you can get 60, 75 percent slot fill. And I'll show you a picture of that. The, the, the other thing you can do to increase the slot fill is to use uniquely designed stators and, and use fractional slot windings that have the coils wrapped around an individual tooth. Here's a couple of examples. This is actually a sintered, it's not laminated, it's sintered out of powder 
and and and, and it's it's it each each tooth has its yoke centered and cast on it with little nesting notches there and so you can layer put a bobbin on here that's what that is and then layer wind the copper see so layer winding at very high slot fill and uh, uh, let's see Honda uh, uh, builds their machines like this there's a lot of different versions of this also of uh, winding layer winding the copper around individual teeth there's lots of ways you can construct a stator to do that and uh, now there's a number of mechanical considerations that are important to think about for stators. With small stators, you don't run into any of these problems. But large stators, uh, the 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 laminations are going to vibrate, and if you have coils laying down down these slots going around the end of the teeth, uh, the if, and if these lambs vibrate, they'll move back and forth like this and and cause wear on the insulation and short out the windings plus it makes the motors noisy so so it's not uncommon to use finger plates these are these are thick pieces that are kind of shaped like the lamb lamination but they have a spring effect there's different designs and they push they compress actually from one end to the other to keep all the the uh, extending teeth together those are called finger plates and that uh, reduces vibration, noise, and coil insulation wear. Then, then the next thing that, that I want to show you are these uh, these cooling ducts. I remember I showed you a few slides ago a, uh, a core that well, they were welding straps on the OD to hold these sections together. These are stacked sections of lambs that are that are spaced apart by these uh, stamp ducting pieces and I'll show pictures of those in another lecture uh, and and that provides in the rotor and stator passageways for for cooling gases to either air or nitrogen or hydrogen is put through there to see see if, if you, you have conductors that go all the way down these slots and so the thermal diffusion paths of those conductors are quite long so uh, so in order to to get more direct cooling these passages allow the cooling gas to go up through the slots and have intimate contact with the portion of the conductors that are going through those those openings between the cores now the other thing is these these big machines that have these big coils that go down through here the the ends are formed in various ways to connect to the next slot and uh, the the mass of those large coils as you see down here is considerable so uh, those will vibrate and work hard in the copper and then they crack or you have insulation damage, things like that. So, so bracing of end turns to withstand vibration and of course there's magnetic forces on these conductors as well. So, so uh, it's not uncommon to provide different methods of bracing and, and through the course of these lectures I'll point out some other bracing uh, instances as well. Uh, here's here's one here. Here's a, a a picture of a motor with a with a big insulated uh, wire cable ring that goes all the way around the core, and and so this doesn't support it to the frame, but it does uh, support them all together and keep them from vibrating with respect to each other because they're hand laced around the coils from the bottom up and they're laced over. So so that that lacing to this uh, insulated steel ring here uh, gives tremendous rigidity to this whole end turn mass. Now here's, uh, here's an example of some high performance motors that uh, all of you are familiar with, the Toyota stators. It shows a picture of their motor stator and their generator. This, this one here, one of these is the Prius and the other one is the uh, uh, Camry. I don't remember which one is which, but these are public pictures. And uh, let's see, I think this one's a Prius and this is a Camry. Yeah, I'm quite certain of that. It shows some of the gears in, that are in between them. But And, and here's an example. Th this is the stator for the 2010 Prius. It's not this one. It's newer. This is 2004. But the 2010 Prius has a, has a core made like that with totally open slots. And the lamb and the and the coils are wound on bobbins that fit over the teeth, 
and half of the coils are tapered, taper layer wound, and the other half are parallel taper wound. So, so you put all the tapered ones in first. Every other one is inserted first. Now you could put the parallel ones in. They, they'll go in. If they're both tapered or both parallel, they won't fit. But if one is tapered, one is parallel, they all fit, and they're balanced. You've got the same number of turns in each one of these. The dimensions are such that you have the same amount of copper in each one, and they're just shaped different, parallel side, taper sided. And uh, uh, it turns out with a three-phase machine and 12 slots, you've got uh, 12 slots divided by three phases. It means there's four coils per phase. So two of the coils in series are taper wound, the other two are parallel wound. It works out that way with every other one. So they're completely balanced windings. Now don't jump off and, and try this yourself because Toyota's got this patented. But uh, this is an interesting trick and gives you an idea of how you might uh, uh, configure a stator where uh, it's not, you, you design for manufacturing uh, ease of manufacturing and for high slot fills both and it's, it's a beautiful example of that now this is a, a picture of the Ramey stator that uses rectangular wire and has very high slot fill you see these are I, I think they're they're square whoops they're square wire and uh, they're in they're called hairpin windings and they're inserted in there and they have very high slot fill and all these connections are done uh, afterwards. So that's a fantastic design. Uh, this is an advanced stator design used for a superconducting machine. Uh, and, and you can see here that uh, you've got these intern supports. This is a, a four pole machine. So the interns are huge in this because these are big rectangular wires for high slot fill. So the interns are big and all the connections between them took up a lot of space so all that mass hanging out there vibrating would cause failure so so attached to the stator here's the stator mechanical part a big heavy thing and then these blades that come out here and 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 they're insulated of course and then these interns are supported with straps that connect to these blades so that's uh and this is all the cooling stuff in here but uh so that that's an example of how a, a core is made. This is the superducting coils in the rotor. So that concludes this uh, lecture. Thank you very much.